Alright everybody, out. check out this music. We are getting into Tr Mazatron. The second Tron game that we are going to play. In the vaunted So much Tron trilogy. action on your television, you couldn't handle it. Um, Disney couldn't even handle it, probably, I'll be honest with you. So here we go, we are evidently one of the characters from Tron, and we're going to go through this see, maze. we're going to try to madness. get through this maze here. It's absolute madness, I mean... All right, it's Maze of Tron. It's Tronness. I get it. So once again, as I said before, one of the uh, uh -oh. games that uses the, the Tron license that the Intellivision seemed to really push for whatever reason. Tron being the universe where you were inside of a computer system, a matrix, if you will, and that is one of the ships. Evidently, it's coming to get you. One of the Sentinel ships. Oh come on! And it's gonna chase you down. So this kind of reminds me of the chase sequence from the movie. As we get through these games, we'll notice that we're kind of putting together more and more aspects of the movie in different variations. And that movie basically was a huge tech demo. And so a instead very of film. instead of making just one movie game, they decided to separate each scene into a game. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you need. I mean, it's gonna tell the whole story. You could play it at home, relive it anytime you wanted. If the film just would have been a bigger hit. So uh, we we stopped uh, off talking a little bit about how Intellivision went into the crash. Now we need to talk about this infamous keyboard attachment. As I said before, Mattel had said whenever they started promoting the Intellivision since 1980 that there would eventually be a keyboard released that would turn the Intellivision not only into a home video game console but into a home computer system. Now over the years, Mattel continued to push this in their advertising and uh, in different aspects of it and it yeah, the keyboard component basically be started to become vaporware after a while absolutely and they kept saying you know it's on its way it's on its way well this ended up getting them into trouble with the FTC the Federal Trade Commission uh, evidently they were getting a lot of complaints about this you know that's misadvertising that's lying to the consumer over a long period of time and they began an investigation eventually they began finding Mattel ten thousand dollars a day until they got this keyboard released. By the time they did release the keyboard, though, it wasn't going to do all the things that it touted originally. It was going to have a cassette player and different aspects to it, and they ended up coming out with a very new ah. version of this that didn't sell at all. About the around 1983, which was when we saw the complete crash and Mattel leaving the Intellivision. Having some control issues here. Yeah, it happens. You're in a Tron type world, you know, what can you do? The computer doesn't want me to win so bad that they're uh, affecting my controls. So, what we saw after uh, the, this. A little bit more on the keyboard component. Um, did you tell the, the Jay Leno joke? No, I didn't. Yeah, the. Uh, bit, Jay Leno was apparently running a. Um, doing one of their Christmas parties and he was up up on the uh, stage and said the three greatest lies are I'll call you in the morning the checks in the mail and the keyboard will be out in the spring <laughs> and this is at an internal Mattel <laughs> and meeting. there were crickets like you'd never there were crickets like there were in Beauty and the Beast they were just chirping away I don't know if that's true or not but I'm sure it did not go over well I'm sure the the head bosses looked at each other while smoking their stogies and eating shrimp off a platter and just sighed. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, where my mind went. I'm, I hope <laughs> yours also. So, as I said before, we saw the demise of Mattel with the Intellivision. Now, what's interesting is there was a resurrection. Uh, the vice president of marketing, Valinsky, he ended up buying the rights uh, to the Intellivision. I believe the price was $16.5 million dollars. Which is a hefty chunk of, ch chunk of change, and will buy many a shrimp platter for those uh, in power at the time. So, we never did see the Intellivision 3 release, but eventually what we did see was the in INTV System 3, which is a separate thing altogether. Basically all it was was the Intellivision, the original one, repackaged in a sleek black box. 
Not so much the wood grain finish box that the original television was, which is nice, you know. I it, it would go along with your log cabin home, I guess, or whatever people were living in the 80s. I'm not really sure why 80s, uh, a lot of 80s hardware looked like had that wood finish. I am not sure what that was going. It was the stylish thing to do at the time. I guess I I think they should bring that back in. It's very. Very alluring. Very retro. I think a lot of people who own Victorian homes bought these systems for that reason. Not positive, but... <laughs> well, that's been quite a uh, run through uh, Tron, Mazatron. Yeah, that game... It's Tron difficult. as they say in some circles. It's a very difficult And title. I don't think we're going to make it to the Master Commander tonight, but you know, it's... It's interesting. It's showing a lot of what the television could do compared to the Atari. You know, we're going through full-fledged levels. We're seeing a lot of scrolling going on. There is a lot of different things happening. Sure, it's not, you know, what we're used to today's standards, but at the time, there's really no comparison. Uh, this game is doing things the Atari could not do. You know, Plimpton would have said, look at this, and Atari sucks, and I'm sure he would have said it in a more... Atari isn't as qualified. Is, Atari is inferior in every way to the Mattel television. Just look at our Sean titles. I don't know if he talked like that. <laughs> well, eating his shrimp platter also. Everyone at <laughs> Mattel had shrimp platters, as we, as we'll see. Uh, dude, they didn't have shrimp platters. I, oh, I, don't, I'm sure I think they you're did. confusing them with Atari. Atari, <laughs> no, Atari was eating. Uh, <laughs> I don't Magic know. Magic mushroom? Maybe? I'm not sure. Who knows? Atari had moved up to lobster by that point. Lobster bits. And television got shrimp platters. Atari had lobster dinners every night. <laughs> and some crazy after parties. Which so tells you how, how well the. Um, I think the famous Atari quote was we could can crap or we could cartridge crap at this point and sell it, which we saw in Kool Aid Man. But Tron was trying, so back to the Intellivision. Yeah. And television really did try to put out a good quality product. They experimented a lot with yeah. their system. And like I said, we're seeing scrolling levels here. We're seeing changing level design. We're seeing all kinds of interesting things. And this isn't the last of Tron that we'll see for the Intellivision. So we're going to move on to our next game. Ugh, oh, he no feel good. Are you ready for some soccer? Oh, that's what... Oh, yeah, they call it football everywhere else. You ready for some football? <clears throat> I want to go fast. So let's play some football. Shall we, then? He's running the wrong way. Um, not sure if we're playing. Hit medium in the middle of the control button, dealie. Oh, yeah, I'm playing, mother... <laughs> okay, so I'm purple. Oh, I am purple. And of course, the goal of soccer and or football, whatever you'd like to call it, is to get the ball in the opponent's net. So we're making an attempt to do that. So these guys are uh, pretty detailed. They look like the Intellivision guy, like the Intellivision logo guy. A lot of the characters in the games do look like him. And <laughs> how just, he became the Intellivision guy. <laughs> he's just like a little running, the stick running man. man. Yeah, which to def differentiate him from the Atari's walking man, apparently, <laughs> this guy could had two frames of animation where his leg ran forward as well as just going forward. So he had actually three frames of animation, much more advanced. I've been making more comparisons between Mattel Electronics and Television and Atari. Different games, but the same results. Look at Atari Basketball. And in Television. I think in Television plays much more like real basketball. Here's Atari Soccer. And in Television. Again, I find in Television more sophisticated and lifelike. If you try them both, I think you'll find the clear winner is in Television from Mattel Electronics. Who can't